everyone so welcome back so in the last class we were learning about refraction right in the first class we learned about reflection then we learned about refraction in refraction we learned about snell's law of refraction and also we applied the law of refraction to find what is the, how do we find the real depth and the apparent depth also in two situations when the observer is in the rare medium and when the observer is in the denser medium okay so if you have not watched the video please go back and provide the link also below in the description box please go back and watch those videos all right so now in today's class we are going to learn about refraction through a glass lab or refraction from a glass lab so refraction from a glass lab so let me consider a glass lab of thickness t so I'm drawing here a glass slab of thickness T. Fine. Thickness I'm marking here, thickness T. So in a glass slab, when the light is incident here, it will be undergoing two rounds of refractions, right? One from this interface and two at this interface. Now, this glass slab has two parallel refracting surfaces. It has two parallel refracting surfaces. So from here we can write, since the thickness of the glass slab is T, we can actually write this as angle of incidence I, right? Now it is getting refracted and light is moving from a rare medium to a denser medium, clear? If it is moving from a rare to a denser, what will happen? It will bend towards or away? It will bend towards the normal, right? So remember draw towards the normal. So I'm drawing it like this. At this point also, I'm actually drawing another normal here. Fine. Here, this is the angle of incidence. If this is R, since these two are parallel, this should also be equal to our alternate opposite angles, right? So now, it is again getting refracted from the system at this boundary or interface. Now, it is from denser to a rarer. What will happen? Draw denser to a rarer bends away from the normal, right? Denser to rarer bends away from the normal. So it is bending away from the normal. Now I'm extending this line and this line. Fine. So as you can see, the angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of emergence. The angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of emergence. And the deviation produced here should also be equal to zero. Why? Because the incident ray and the reflect and the refracted ray, the final emergent ray, are actually parallel to each other. And we can say that there is a lateral shift taking place there. We can call it either as lateral shift or as lateral displacement. Okay. Now let me mark this point as point A. This is B. Fine. And this is C. Right? So from here, at this point A, we can write N1, this is having a refractive index N1, this is having a refractive index N2, this one again N1. So N1 sine I is equal to N2 sine R. It's the same as law of refraction. Okay. And we can also write from here, we can also write like this over here, En2 sine R is equal to is equal to N2 sine E. Fine. N1 sine I is equal to N2 sine R. N2 sine R is equal to N2 sine E. And I already mentioned that R is equal to R. I'm just showing you that I should be equal to E. Fine. So here I can write this to our equal means. We can equate it and we can write it as this is actually N1, okay? N1 sine E. N1 is in this medium. So we can write this like this. N1 sine I is equal to N1 sine E. N1 I mean cancels. Or we get I is equal to E. That is what I just told you right now. The angle of incidence and the angle of emergence are equal. I just proved it for you. Fine. Now, how do you determine this B there? Now look at the figure and tell me how do you determine the value of B? Now take this triangle ABC, triangle ABC, 
in triangle ABC, you can say that now this is angle I, right? And this is R. Now this angle, the frontal angle should be what? This I and this is actually vertically opposite angles, which means this total angle should also be I. So if the total angle is I, what should be this angle? It should be I minus R. It should be what? I minus R. So this angle is I minus R. So from this triangle ABC you can write sine of I minus R is actually equal to sine of I minus R is actually equal to opposite side D divided by hypotenuse. And hypotenuse is AB. Hypotenuse is AB. Now I'm drawing, extending this normal like this and I'm marking a point D here. So in triangle AD B, what do you get? Triangle ADB, I'm going to take cos R in the triangle. So cos R will be equal to cos R adjacent side by hypotenuse, right? So adjacent side is actually this. This is actually the thickness. So T divided by hypotenuse is AB. So you can actually get AB from here. What is AB? AB is equal to T by cos R. So substitute the value for AB over here. And then simply and then write the simplified form D is equal to AB. You can bring it over here. So sine of I minus R into T divided by cos R. So the lateral displacement or the lateral shift is given by D is equal to sine of I minus R into T by cos R. Please remember that equation, it will come in handy for you. I know that you have done this uh, actually in your lab and everything. So this must be quite familiar with you, for you. But make sure you learn it. You revisit the equations one by one. Okay. At least remember this formula. And I have taught you this method because if there is something else that is asked for you, something else that is asked in the question, you will find that too. Right. That's why I taught you the method here. Right. So now uh, let's move on to the next one. And that's about the normal shift that happens in case of a glass lab. Now, the first condition is clear, I hope, for everyone. So, normal shift means, suppose I am placing my glass lab like this. Again, the thickness is T. Okay. Now, an object is over here. When I am placing a glass lab like this, the converging or the diverging beam actually appears to be shifted from the point of convergence or divergence here. The converging or the diverging beams appears to be the shifted from the point of convergence or divergence. Why? Let's see. Suppose my light is coming from here, going like this, right? So denser to rarer medium, what happens? Bends? Bends towards the normal. Right? So there's a bending. And here again, an interface uh, gonna occur, bends away. So it'll do something like this. It's not exactly straight then, okay? I'm just drawing like that. Okay, uh, right. So it is bending away. So what is actually happening? A person looking from here will feel that the object is actually over here or dash. So a shift is there x. Understood? But that is known as a normal shift. And the normal shift x is again given by x is equal to a very familiar formula for you mu minus one by mu into t, where t is the thickness. You have seen this formula where in case of an observer when he was in the rare medium. The same condition is coming here also. So in case of a normal shift, this is a case of a normal shift, we are obtaining the shift x as mu minus 1 by mu into t. Right? So I hope this is clear for you. So in the first case, we were discussing about a glass lamp and what is the lateral shift or the displacement occurring there. And the second uh, part, we were discussing about what is a normal shift value. I have not done the derivation part there. Uh, please remember the equation x is equal to mu minus 1 by mu into t. Okay. So I hope uh, it's clear. Uh, so if you have any doubts, please feel to, feel to comment below um, and, and ask me your doubts about the glass lab. Okay. So uh, thank you for watching Basel Physics Classroom and have a nice day. Thank you.